a language isolate spoken in North and South Korea. It has around 77 million native speakers and is an official language in North Korea, South Korea, and some provinces in China. The roots of Korean are under heavy debate because no one really knows what languages it's related to. Some believe it's part of the widely discredited Altaic family. Some say it's Austronesian. Some say it's Dravidian? But Korean is usually classed as a language isolate, even though it does have some extinct relatives. Korean's origins are unclear because the first Korean texts are actually written in Chinese, but more on that later. Old Korean was spoken in the Three Kingdoms period of Goguryeo, Baekje, and Silla. No one really knows how related the languages of the kingdoms really were, but people generally think that the languages were fairly similar, although not the same. Then Silla conquered the two other kingdoms, and so its language became widely spoken across the peninsula. This was just before Middle Korean, and because it didn't have its own writing system, it adopted the Chinese one, which was an awful idea, mind you. When the Goryeo dynasty came to power, the Kaesong dialect became dominant as it was the dialect of the capital city at the time. This was Middle Korean, and also is the period where the first Korean source is found, written in Chinese. The language also had tones, which are no longer seen in Korean, but they were marked in Hangul, the new writing system created by King Sejong the Great, or in Korean, Sejong Daewang. In 1910 began the Japanese occupation of Korea, and Japanese was made the official language. Korean was banned, and people had to change their names to Japanese ones. Japanese started being taught in schools, and it was a language of education. Despite the suppression of the Korean language, it survived after 1945, which is when the Japanese left. By this time, though, a lot of Japanese vocabulary had entered Korean. Let's talk about Korean's writing system. It's known as Hangul, and it was created by King Sejong the Great in the 1400s. When he came to power, he noticed that his people could barely read or write due to how poorly Chinese characters denoted Korean, and thus literacy rates were very low. Oftentimes, it was only the nobles and people who could afford an education who could write. So, King Sejong invented Hangul. The script was so easy to learn that literacy skyrocketed in the peninsula, to the point where future kings tried to ban it from usage because they feared it was making people too smart. The way it works is that one character represents one syllable, and so each character must have at least one consonant and one vowel. Some characters have an additional consonant at the bottom, or butchim position, which shows the final consonant of the syllable. Each syllable block is written left to right and top to bottom. Some letters are pronounced differently in different positions, like how this character is pronounced as a velar nasal in the bottom butchim position, but it takes the sound of the vowel if it's in the initial position. Similarly, this character makes a tapped R sound in the initial position, like in Damyon, but it makes more of an L sound in the bottom position, like in Tongmul. Let's talk about Korean's vocabulary. It differs a lot depending on whether you're in the north or the south. For example, Kim Il-sung, the founder of North Korea, made a law which eliminated the use of all loanwords in Korean. So while a South Korean would say ice cream, a North Korean would say orum kwaja, literally ice snack. Some other words include a part to Munhwajitek, literally culture housing, or juice to Kwail Tanwul, literally fruity sweet water. Apart from that, Korean has a lot of words from Chinese, but the South and North borrow these words differently. If a Chinese word began with N or R, the South would drop it, but the North would retain it. In other words, it would lead to differences like Yong to Lyong, Yoda to Nyoja, and Yonsip to Lyonsip. Because Korean has borrowed so many words from Chinese, Korean now has hanja, and they're sometimes seen in texts like newspapers, although most just use hangul. These make up a lot of Korean words. For example, pung means thing. If we add on jae, meaning manufactured, we get jepung, a product. Chakpung is an art piece. Shikpung is a food item, and so forth. Or if we take the hanja gum, meaning money, we can have yogum. Chulgum and hyungum. Let's talk about Korean's grammar. Korean nouns don't inflect for gender, and even though there is a plural suffix, you can usually go without using it. As for case, Korean uses clitics. The three most important clitics are the information clitics. They're the topic marker, subject marker, and object marker. The topic and subject often get mixed up due to their similar functions, but generally speaking, the subject marker marks old or factual information, but the topic marker marks new and specific statements. While the topic marker can emphasize the subject, the subject marker can emphasize the description. For example, if someone said, Dalgin and Palgayo, strawberries are red, you would use the subject marker. It's a general fact that strawberries are red. But if you were to say, 자동차가 빨가요, the car is red, 
you would use the topic marker because cars can be many different colors. As for shifting the topic of this sentence, let's take two different conversations. Number one, 누가 설거지했어? 대조가 했어. And two, 대조는 지금 뭐예요? 대조는 지금 먹고 있어요. In the first conversation, you'd use the topic marker because the speaker wants to know about the subject of the action. They want to know who did the dishes. But in the second conversation, the subject marker is used as the speaker is more interested in what they're doing. They want to know that Tejo is eating, not that the one who is eating is Tejo. Apart from information politics, there's also location particles like e and esa, to and from, but they can both mean at as well, depending on what the verb is. Let's move on to verbs. Verbs in Korean are conjugated for tense and formality, no person marking. They always come at the end of a sentence, but the other arguments can move freely. Korean used to have vowel harmony. Certain vowels couldn't coexist in the same word. Thus, when you applied suffixes, you'd have to make sure that the vowel in the suffix was allowed to coexist with the vowels in the word. Korean no longer exhibits vowel harmony, but it's still seen when you conjugate verbs. First, you need to find the verb stem, which you can do by removing ta from the dictionary form of the verb. Then you need to add a if the stem vowel is a or o, and you add o to the stem if the stem vowel is anything else. For example, salla has the verb stem sal, and since the stem vowel is a, we need to add a to it, making sara. If we have the verb mokta, which has the verb stem mok, we need to add o to the stem because the stem vowel isn't a or o. Now let's try to conjugate kada to go. Its verb stem is ka, and since the stem vowel is a, we need to add a to it, making ka a. But since ka a is a bit hard to pronounce, you just simplify it to get ka. Similarly, if we conjugate oda to come, we'll get this verb stem o. Because the stem vowel is o, we need to add a, making o a. But it just gets shortened to wa. The past tense is simple to form as well. You just add so to the present form. For example, mogo, mogosso. Then you can add a yo to make it more polite, like in mogosso yo. In fact, if you want to make it even more polite, you can add nida, like moksim nida or masim nida. When negating a verb, you can add ji anta. For example, mokta means to eat. And mokji anta means to not eat. And when you conjugate it, it becomes mokji anayo, I don't eat. Or in the past, mokji anasoyo. A shorter way to negate the verb is by putting an before it. Like mogoyo is I eat, but an mogoyo is I don't eat, as well as mokji anayo. There's two types of verbs in Korean action and descriptive. A descriptive verb is actually an adjective, like to be scared, to be happy, to be cold. If you wanted to say something like the weather is very good, you can say 날씨 정말 좋아요. Here the verb 좋다, to be good, is conjugated in the present tense. Descriptive verbs can only be negated by adding the ji anta construction. You can't use that un prefix. But, I hear you probably not asking, if adjectives are all verbs, what if you wanted to give them descriptive qualities? For example, what if you wanted to change the apple is red into the red apple? You simply add n to the adjective, or you just add an n if it ends with a vowel. For example, 쥐는 작아요 turns into 작은 쥐 because the verb 작다, to be small, has this term 작, to which we can add n to make it an adjective, making 작은 small. You can apply this strategy to action verbs by adding n. For example, if we take the sentence 남자가 먹어요, the man eats, and we wanted to turn 먹어요 into an adjective, we could say there is a number of ways to form commands in Korean too. Often, you can just use the verb conjugated in the present tense. For example, mogo is perfectly fine. You can also add seo to be more polite, like mogu seo. Or you can even add sipsuo to be even more polite. Korean verbs can be attached to a lot of different verbal constructions to give different meanings. For example, if we experiment with the verb mokda to eat, we get verbs like mogoboda, mokko itta. There's also a ton of suffixes which aren't made up of other verbal constructions and they express mood, aspect, and other things. A short list would include mongne, mokkodun, mokkun, mongna, mokshida, mongninji, mokhida, mogumyon, mokja, mogumyonso, mokso, mogora, and like a hundred more. 
Now let's look at some example sentences to examine Korean's word order. 이제 겨울이 가고 봄이 돌아왔지만 요것은 여전히 춥다. Let's dissect this sentence. 이제 means now. 겨울이 is winter with the topic particle 이. 가고 is the verb 가다 to go with the suffix 고 attached, meaning and. So we can translate this clause as winter is gone now and 봄이 is spring, again with the topic particle. 돌아왔지만 is probably the most complex part of the sentence. 돌다 means to spin, but we add the verb 오다 to mean to come back. Then onto this construction, we add 지만, meaning but. So we can translate this as winter is gone now and spring has come back, but 요것은 means here and has a subject particle attached because this is factual information. 요전이 means still and 춥다 means cold. Here's another sentence. 저는 영화 보기를 좋아해요. I like watching movies. The verb 보다 means to see, and we add 기 to it to turn it into a noun. In other words, we turn it from to watch to watching. This also has the object marker 를 attached to it. Then 좋아해요 means I like. 배 사과보다 더 좋아해요, meaning I like pears more than apples. 배 means pear, 사과 means apple, and attached to it is 보다, which marks the less desired thing of the comparison. 더 means more, and you can actually drop this and the sentence will keep the same meaning. And 좋아해요, again, means I like. You could also replace 더 with 덜 to give the sentence the opposite meaning. 동생은 내게 다잘될 거야 라고 말했다. 동생 means brother, and adding the subject prefix onto it shows we're more interested in what the brother said. 내게 is an abbreviation of 나에게, meaning to me. 다잘될 거야 means it will all be okay. 다 meaning all, 잘 meaning okay and well, and 될 거야 meaning it will be. 되다 can mean to become as well, and in this sentence is conjugated in the future tense. If we were to make 될 거야 more formal, we could say 될 거예요. Attached to 거야 is 다고, which kind of acts like a verbal quotation mark. It marks indirect speech in sentences like these in which something is quoted. Specifically, it's attached to the verb of the quote. Finally, 말했다 is the verb to say in the past tense. This verb is in what's called the plain form. But just look it up, I don't have time to teach you about it. So this whole sentence means, My brother told me everything will be okay. That's about it for this introduction to Korean, and I hope you learned something from it. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day. Palmet Dobra!